Hey everyone, it's Kalen from Kite. Welcome back. And today we're going to build the game Snake in Python using Pygame. Pygame is a super cool set of Python modules designed for making simple video games. It can be used to build retro arcade games like Space Invaders or Snake. Here is what the end result of our Snake game will look like. Pygame provides many built-in features to help us construct a game, like graphics, sound, and other game mechanics. Pygame is the main package we'll be using today, but we'll also need the sys and random modules too. If you want to follow along, there's a link to the code from this project in the description below. Since Pygame is not part of Python's standard library, we'll need to download it. Simply open up a terminal and type the pip install command to install it here. Now let's open a new Python script to start building our game. We need to import the following libraries and modules, pygame, sys, and random. We'll start by setting up the general structure of the snake game itself. In our design, a snake class represents the moving snake and a food class represents the stationary block that the snake must eat to grow. The pass keyword acts as a placeholder for code that we'll write later. Inside our snake class, we need to implement a few methods. These methods will allow us to move, draw, reset, and retrieve relevant information about the snake. Like our snake class, we also need to add a few methods to our food class. We need to be able to randomize the position of the food and draw a representation of it. Next, we declare some global variables to keep track of some of the important features of the game. These will include the screen width and height, the grid size, as well as the possible movements of the snake, which are up, down, left, and right. I set parameters that work well for my screen resolution, but these are easily customizable. After that, we can start to build the main game loop. The main game loop is important. Once an action happens, the main game loop will call specific functions and methods discussed earlier. This loop will run continuously until the game is exited. Let's start by implementing this loop in the main function of our program. First, we need to create the screen and the game environment with a little help from the Pygame module. We initialize the game and game clock, which will keep track of each action at a given time. Then we draw the screen and surface that gets updated whenever an action is performed. To do this, we'll need to implement a function separate from both the snake and food classes. Let's call this function draw grid. We use a double for loop to iterate over each x, y coordinate in our grid. To make the grid a checkered background, we'll check if the x coordinate plus the y coordinate is divisible by two. If it is, then we'll draw a square at that position using the pygame.rect and pygame.draw.rect functions respectively. Otherwise, we use the same functions to draw an even darker square. With these prerequisites in place, we can start implementing the game loop. First, we initialize the game score to zero. In a while loop that never terminates, we tick the clock at 10 frames per second. Then, we'll check for any significant event in our game, which we can record with a comment. We'll get back to this later. Once an action happens in our game, we update and refresh the screen and surface. Now, let's go back to the snake class and implement it. The snake class will have a few important properties. We need to keep track of the snake's length, a list of xy positions for each block that makes up the snake, the direction that the snake is headed, and its color. Upon initialization, we'll set the snake's length to 1. We'll set its position to the center of the screen, pointing in a random direction, and we'll give it a teal color. Then, let's write the code for the getHeadPosition method. This will return the position of the head of the snake, which is stored in the positions list property we created earlier. Next, let's implement the turn method. If the snake is just one block, it can move in any of the four directions. But if the snake is longer than one block, then it has just three valid movement patterns. It can continue in the same direction, it can turn right, relative to the movement of the snake's head, or it can turn left. It cannot immediately reverse directions though. To actually move the snake, we need to calculate a new position given the current position and the direction of the snake. Here's the algorithm to do so. Using the getHeadPosition method, we get the position of the head of the snake. Then, we get the current direction of the snake by accessing the snake's direction property. 
Using the grid size and screen width, we calculate the new location of the head of the snake. If the length of the snake is greater than two and the new location of the head of the snake overlaps with any other part of the snake, this means the game is ended. In that case, we reset the snake with a method we'll implement next. Otherwise, we'll add the new head position to the beginning of the positions list and pop the last element. When the game ends, we reset the snake by restoring its properties to default values. Let's also implement the draw method to show the snake on the screen's surface. Draw a block for each xy position of the snake using some functions built into Pygame. And finally, we need a method to handle when the player presses a key. If the player wants to quit the game, then we'll have to exit both Pygame and the running Python program with the method sys.exit. Otherwise, we'll check for an up, down, left, or right key press and turn the snake accordingly. Before we dive into implementing the food class, I want to take a moment to talk about Kite, which is the AI-powered autocomplete we're using in this video. Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. So if you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. All right, let's move on to implementing the food class. The code for the food class is more straightforward than the snake class. The food object will have an XY position and it'll have a color. Each time we initialize a food object, its position is randomized with the randomized position method. This method will return a random XY position on the grid using the random module we imported earlier. Next, we also need to draw the food object on the screen surface. This is almost exactly like the draw method we used for the snake class, but we'll only need to draw a single block for its position. Now that we have the snake and food classes implemented, let's go back to the main loop. We already called snake.handleKeys to handle the event when a key is pressed. After that, we'll fill the surface with navy again. Then we'll move the snake according to the key press. We'll check if the head position is the same as the food position. And if it is, it means our snake has eaten the food, so we'll add to the snake's length increase the game score by one, and randomize the position of the next food block. We'll then add some code to display the game score as a box in the upper left-hand corner of the game. After this update, we'll redraw both the snake and food. Since this code is within the while loop, it will repeat until the game is exited. Woohoo! The game is finished and now we're ready to play. Let's check it out. I'm going to run the game in the terminal and give it a try. Awesome. The end result is a fully functional snake game. I hope you had fun following along. Today we created a legit game of snake from scratch in Python. There's a link to the full code from this video in the description below, so check that out and customize it to fit the game to your style. Then. Give the gift of procrastination and share the file with your friends and coworkers so they can play Snake instead of getting stuff done. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more Python videos that are coming your way like this one. Finally, check out Kite's AI Autocomplete plugin to code smarter and faster. The link's in the description below. See you on the next video.